Hey, YouTube. How are you? It's been a while. How have you been? I've been good. I have a new son. That's three boys, all five and under. So when I'm not here, my life is suddenly very busy. Well, let's talk about here. I did it, finally. After years of talking about it, I finally built a safe place for the weirdest part of my brain. And small in stature, though this studio may be, it's chock full of my memories. Pretty much everything that has affected me about magic in physical form lives here. It's full of more books than I could ever go through. It's full of more cards than I could ever use. It's full of more close-up pads than any one person should legally be allowed to own. But most importantly, it is chock full of hope. If I'm being candid about it, that was the thing that was sort of fading for me over the past couple years. I've been doing this for so long, I felt like I was falling behind, like I couldn't keep up. Not because things were getting in the way of me doing it, but because doing this was getting in the way of those more important things. I ran headlong into the problem of the hungry neutral algorithm, right? Every algorithm that runs every social media platform is hungry in the sense that it will ask you to keep talking long after you're done saying whatever it is you meant to say. And it's neutral in the sense that it doesn't care what kind of content you generate so long as that content generates engagement which means that in the end, they are very easy to please and very difficult to satisfy. And I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to make content that just kept people scrolling. I wanted people to come to my channel and take a deep breath. But if that was going to happen, I was going to have to take the deep breath first. So I did. I just stopped. I backed up. I focused on my family. But I missed you guys. But if I was going to come back, I'd have to do it in a way that I could sustain that I honestly felt was making the world better, not worse, because that's very difficult to do if you're gonna try to chase that beast. If you're going to try to feed a hungry neutral algorithm in perpetuity, I promise you, you will eventually do things that you never agreed to from this vantage point in order to stay relevant to its metrics. So, rule number one, fuck the algorithm. We don't need it on this channel. As far as frequency, as far as content, I will be the one who decides, not some computer. If you guys are okay with that, stick around. Step number two, you and I are going to have to very clearly define what I mean by doing something that matters as far as magic on social media is concerned. So let's have a very honest discussion about what that looks like. To begin, though, this is not me passing a moral judgment on anyone out there working their asses off. This is not me calling out any magicians or creators at all. This is strictly a Jeremy-centric point of view. This is the framework that I had to adopt in order to maintain my sanity if I was going to do this in the long term. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about the first and lowest form of magic on social media, and that is exposure. The reason why I say exposure is the lowest form of magic is not because I think exposure is inherently bad, it's because I think it's cheap, especially when it's drawn out. Now, exposure used as a weapon, exposure used to sabotage someone's career or steal their livelihood, that's bad, but that's because the intention for which exposure was used is bad, right? Sometimes exposure can actually be kind of fun. Giving someone a peek behind the curtain at all the hard work we have to do can actually be really entertaining in small doses. But exposure for its own sake, exposure as content, that doesn't even move the needle on magic. And here's why we know that. Magic is still around. Let's you and I run a thought experiment. Take every secret of magic that has ever been put in physical or digital form and put it in a box. Every book, every DVD, every download, all of it in that box. And that box is finite in size. And yet the rate at which people come off the internet, reach into that box and throw it up onto the internet for free has only increased geometrically over the past couple decades. So if exposure is bad for magic as an art form, why didn't magic die on the ash heap of history five years ago? It's because it isn't. It's because magic is more robust than the exposure of its secrets, and the world doesn't care. Magic as an art form has withstood the test of exposure for the past several hundred years. I honestly think we'll be just fine. But we can say that it might cheapen the experience. And here's why. Just being exposed to the secrets of magic is the equivalent of exhibition without the dignity of intimacy. It's porn, not marriage, right? It's reading the last chapter of all of the great books and assuming that you know the stories now. You don't. You just know the secret. But sometimes, sometimes, that is enough to cause someone to want to become a magician. Sometimes exposure is the reason that someone wants to learn magic. But if you're going to do that, then you need education. 
far as I'm concerned, education is the first time that magic really starts to matter on social media, mainly because it's active, not passive. It's the first time that you get to watch people really give a damn about the outcome. For content creators, it's why we build studios and buy lights and huge cameras and wear microphones. It's because we're desperately trying to articulate as clearly as possible the ideas that matter most to us. We're trying to edify the generations that came before. We're trying to teach the subtleties that it took us years to discover on our own because we didn't have access to the same media that you do. For the people watching the videos, you know what this is like. Yeah, of course, there are the ones that are just pure entertainment. They just scratch the dopamine itch. But when you really want to learn something, you go for the channels where you can tell the person cares that you learn it. Now, to all the people who keep making the argument that magic shouldn't be taught on social media. Here's my counter argument. You are making that argument from a point of privilege. Chances are you're a magician with access to people and books and downloads and money and time. You are not the kid borrowing his big brother's phone and using the Wi-Fi connection from the restaurant across the street to try to become a magician. That kid deserves as much of a chance, so give it to him. Do I think we should stop here? Do I think that this is the final stopping point for magic on social media? Absolutely not. I think we still have yet to reach elevation. Elevation is the toughest one to explain, mainly because you only know it when you feel it. It's a little different for everyone, but there's a few common examples. It's Ricky Jay and his 52 assistants. It's Helder in a pandemic reminding the world that no one is ever just one thing. It's Steve Cohen preserving an era for the rest of us to enjoy. It's Ben Earl in clown makeup speaking nihilistic profundity. It's Steve Valentine sitting you down and telling you the story of the Russian. And it's Derek Delgadio with the resounding two words, I am. It's what happens when magic speaks to the outside world in a language it can understand. And it's what happens when the outside world somehow finds a way to affect magic, leaving it and us changed from then on. It's what allows magic to withstand the test of exposure, because it shows the world how unimportant the secret really is. You know this. You felt it. I'm only reminding you. We could do that. I don't know how we pull that off here. I don't even know that we can. But there was no place for magic on social media until there was, until we made it. And we did it out of inspiration, not desperation. We did it out of hope. It may take us decades, but we could do that. Anyway, until then, and until next time, I'll see you soon.